Okay, so this is the last lesson and the last transformation that we're going to cover. Uh, and then we'll move on to do one lesson out of Chapter 7, and then we'll move on to Chapter 8 and conclude with Chapter 9. So this one is on dilations. So what's something that you guys remember that it talked about a dilation was from the little video we just watched? Oh, come on. You can come up with a word. Savannah. Okay. Yes, we have a point of dilation, and it's kind of like we've had a center of rotation. We've got a line of reflection. So we have those sorts of things. So this one has a center point, the center of dilation, and that center of dilation can be anywhere. So I'm going to hold off before I write that down. What are some things you remember that talk specifically about what a dilation is? Susie. Say it real loud. I could hardly hear you. Yeah, you take a picture, and it, you can make it larger, or you can make it smaller. Now, there was something crucial about it getting larger and getting smaller. What was the crucial piece about it getting larger or getting smaller? Nico. Yeah, the shape did not change. It was what we use the word proportional. So, for example, when you guys are looking in a book at a map of, let's say, California, that shape of California is the shape of actual California, but they have reduced it in size so it'll fit on a page. It's not out of proportion. If it was, then it, would, it wouldn't look right. And so that's exactly the same thing that's happening with a dilation. So, all right, now I'm ready to write some of that stuff down. So a dilation is a transformation uh, that in, uh, let's see, let's see how to say it, enlarges, oh, enlarges, yeah, enlarges or reduces a figure proportionally. And so I'm going to write in parentheses what Nico said. The shape remains the same shape. but different size. So when they were talking about that picture, all of a sudden this gal's head didn't become super huge and her body was super small, or her body became super large and her head became super small. It all grew or shrunk at the same rate. Now, what word did they use that told you how much it grew or how much it shrunk? So how much it enlarged or how much it reduced. Susie? Okay, and we got to include that in our definition, otherwise it would be incomplete. So a transformation that enlarges or reduces a figure proportionally using a scale factor. Okay. And it's relative to a particular point, a center point. And we call that center point the center of dilation. And we can say it's the point about which the shape grows or shrinks. And what Savannah added was, it can be located anywhere. But the interesting thing I saw when they were showing the photograph on the coordinate grid and when it enlarged, 
that point of that center of dilation stayed. It didn't shift anywhere. It stayed where it was, and it was the other point that grew and grew. Okay, so that's what was interesting is that that point is what we call fixed. It does not move. So it is fixed and does not move. Okay, so that's the center of dilation. Okay, um, so I'm going to give you a formula that they use just so you can, because I never know quite how things get presented to you in other places, and I want to make sure that you understand how to read something. Okay, now that scale factor sometimes is being represented by the letter K. So I'm going to move on. Is everybody good? Can I move on to the next screen? Are we good? Okay. So K is going to represent the scale factor. Okay. Can anyone tell me what the scale factor was when they enlarged? Okay. So it was a three. Can anyone tell me what the scale factor was when it shrunk? A half. So the scale factor, these k's, fall into two categories. Okay, numbers that are bigger than one, numbers that are between zero and one. So we have fractions, and then we have numbers larger than one. Why is one not one of the values? Yeah, it doesn't shrink or get larger. It stays exactly the same. So we kind of exclude one in the scale factor. So if the K is greater than 1, then we're going to get a dilation that enlarges. Oh, enlarges. Enlarges, okay. And then, so that is called an enlargement. And seeing for some reason that I have lost my vocabulary, um, all I keep thinking is when I go to, I want to get a bigger picture than what my original is, I blow it up. But that's not a very technical term. Did they just call that an enlargement? What did they call that? When they, you get, like you have a 4 by 6 and you want to make it an 8 by 10. Did, I know that's the action, but I don't think it's called a blow up. <laughs> I think it's got, I think of a blow up with something else. Somebody having like, ah! or sometimes with diapers. No, those would be blowouts. <laughs> yeah, those are not nice. I'm glad those days are gone. Okay, now if K, oh, hello, maybe if I got in black. If K is greater than zero but less than one, so in other words, a fraction then the dilation, it's a dilation that shrinks. And the official word for that is a reduction. Okay, so once I know what my... Um, K is, what do I do with that number to figure out my new coordinates or my new size or whatever? <coughs> right, exactly. So here's what happens. So this is a um, dilation with scale factor K. So if you want to call this a rule, so to speak, it looks like this. We start with our regular ordered pair. And then what we do is we multiply the k value by each of the coordinates of that ordered pair. And then that takes me to the new place. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if we have anything. They talk much about center of dilation. Most of the times when we have coordinates, it really is not giving us much of a center of dilation. It looks like many of them are the origin. I'm trying to see 
if there's any without. Oh, we've got some cool ones. I'm going to do, we're going to do a lot of practice. You can see what happens. It's, it's actually, I love, this is my favorite. Um, okay, so let's see if there's anything else I want to say. Oh, so let's talk about our pre-image versus our image. Would we consider those two congruent? Yeah, so the pre-image to the image can't be congruent. So what, does anyone remember what word we use when the shape is the same but the size is different proportionally? Does anyone remember what that word is? It's hard for me to remember. Again, things have changed so much with the curriculum, so I, I'm always confused what you guys have covered. Um, it's a word that begins with S, and it, me it means not the same as, but close. Similar. Similar. And that's what is the word that we use in a dilation, is that the pre-image and image are considered similar, which means same shape, different sizes. And when I say different sizes, and it's the same shape, it's proportionally growing or proportionally shrinking. Okay. Let's do an example where we're just going to figure out the new coordinates based on the scale factor that we're given. Then we'll do an example, or maybe two, where we are given a scale factor and we actually have to draw it and come up. With the, well, come up with the new coordinates and then draw it. And then we're going to do one where we have to figure out what the scale factor is. So you have a little bit of everything that shows up in your homework. All right, so the first one is you have a triangle. So this one we're not going to draw. A triangle has vertices. A is at 0, 0, so the origin. B is at 8, 0, and C is at 3, negative 2. Find the coordinates. Of the triangle. After a dilation with a scale factor of 4. Okay, so just visualize, is your picture shrinking or enlarging? enlarging. Definitely enlarging by 4 times, okay? So here's what we're going to do, is we're going to take our ordered pair and we're going to multiply each of the coordinates by 4. So we're going to take the x and multiply it by 4. And we're going to take the y and multiply it by 4. Okay. So I'm going to list my a, b, and c over here. And a was 0, 0. B was 8, 0. I know that looks like 8P, doesn't it? Let me clean that up a little bit, sorry. And C was at 3, negative 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of the coordinates and multiply them by that 4. So we're going to have 4 times 0 and 4 times 0. And that's going to give us A prime is going to be at 0, 0. So in that case, A prime and A were at exactly the same point. Okay, on the next one, we're going to take 4 and multiply it by the 8. Oops, sorry. And we're going to take 4 and multiply it by the 0. And that takes us, B prime is going to be at 32, 
zero. So you can see maybe why they didn't have you graph this one, because 32 is awfully big. Melissa, we're taking notes. And then we've got 4 times 3. and 4 times negative 2. So that's going to take our C prime to 12, negative 8. Okay? So that's all you need to do is to figure out the coordinates with A prime is at 0, 0, B prime is at 32, 0, and C prime is at 12, negative 8. So that could be that's always going to be part of what you're going to do with all your dilations. But then there may be a second part that says now actually graph it. So let's do a couple like that. And I'm going to show, yes? So um, on the video we watched, yes. there, uh, there's a graph that shows that the point of the yes. You know, that would be an interesting question. So let's hold on and we'll look at what's happening and I'll show you how you can figure out what the center of dilation is. It's, they don't often say it, but when you look at your pre-image and your image together, um, there's a way to find out where that center of dilation is. Most of ours tend to be the origin. Okay. All right, so let's do the next one. Now I'm going to kick up some graph paper because this one we're going to have... Um, Let's see. Uh, we have a figure with vertices J at 3, 8, K at 10, 6. Oops, sorry. And J at 8, 2. So you're going to... Did I do J twice? Oh, J, K, L. Sorry. Got to know my alphabet. So at L, 8, 2. So we're going to graph the figure. So that's the pre-image. And, and the image after a dilation. Melissa, the directions are very important for you to have in your notes. Your job is to copy now. Okay? With a scale factor of one half. So, is our, what's our pre-image, our image going to look like compared to our pre-image? Is it going to be shrinking or enlarging? is going to be smaller, okay? So first thing we have to do is to come up with our rule, and our rule is going to be we're going to take each ordered pair from the pre-image, and we're going to multiply each of the coordinates by one-half. Okay, now, I'm going to demonstrate on this one. I'm going to do the math in my head, okay? But I am going to show what I have. So we're going to start off with our three points, J at 3, 8, K at 10, 6, and L at 8, 2. So what I'm going to do is now multiply each of the numbers by 1 half. So we're going to come up with, well, let me do a different color. We'll come up with J prime, K prime, and L prime. So 3 times 1 half would be what? 1.5. I'm just going to write one and a half. And the reason why I like the way that Savvy went to a mixed number is because we have to graph this. So if we leave it at three halves, we, we don't have halves on our grids. We have whole numbers. So that's good to write it. And then what is half times eight? Half of eight is, because that's the y, half of eight is four. Okay. And then half of ten is? Five and half of six is three. Half of eight is four and half of two is half of two is one. Two divided by two is one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and come up with my grid here. So we had only positives. Five, six, seven, eight. 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here's my x, here's my y. I'm going to put in every other number. And I'm going to graph my original in black. So 3, 8, there's your j, 10, 6, there's your k, 8, 2, there's your L. Yeah, draw that a little nicer. Okay. Now in blue, I'm going to go ahead and do my image. So I'm at one and a half, four. So that's my J prime. <laughs> K prime is at 5, 3, and L prime is at 4, 1. Okay. And so what we can do is draw a line that goes from the each of the vertices. So the easy one to see is this one. Okay. So from matching corresponding vertices, We can draw lines, and they all converge here at 0, 0. So that tells you that the center of dilation was 0, 0, or the origin. Okay, It's wherever those lines come back to. That's kind of the weird one. All right, the next one I really like because it's an interesting how it works out. Okay, everybody good on this one? Chase says yes. Okay. So that's, the, that's actually how you physically find the center of dilation. Is the origin. Because all the lines coming from matching coordinates all converge at the same spot. Okay? So that's how you could figure out. All right? And that's the other way to check it, too, to make sure that they all came back to the same spot. If they came to different spots, then you know you did a calculation error someplace. Okay? All right, so the next one is going to be a quadrilateral. So we're going to uh, graph F at negative 1, 1, G at 1, 1, H at 2, negative 1, and I at negative 1, negative 1. Let's see. And its image after being dilated, or after A, let's see, let's say after A dilation. I want to keep the words as close to what you're going to see with a scale factor of 3. So notice how small my coordinates were. Does it make sense that I would have a larger scale factor? Because I could beef up my numbers. But when my numbers were larger in the last example, I had a fractional scale factor so I could get my numbers down lower. So well, I'm going to list out these guys. And again, our rule I'm going to start with a rule. We have our ordered pairs, and what we're going to do is we're going to triple each of the coordinates. So each coordinate gets treated exactly the same. So we have F, G, H, I. F is at negative 1, 1. G is at 1, 1. H is at 2, negative 1 and i is at negative 1, negative 1. So then let's come up with our f prime, g prime, h prime, i prime. So what would be the new coordinates for f prime if the original ones were negative 1, 1, and our scale factor is 3? Negative 3, 3. Look how easy the math is, right? And then g prime, what would its new, scale fa or new uh, coordinates be? Yeah, 1 times 3 and 1 times 3. And h prime would be at? 
6, negative 3, 2 times 3, and negative 1 times 3. And how about I? Negative 3, negative 3. Okay. So as big as we get is 3 in each direction. And we go both places. Oh, no, 6, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, nope. I'm going to do this. I'm going to move this guy over. So I'm skipping by 2 just to spread this out a little bit. I'm oh, sorry, that's not your x, that's your y. Here's your x. So here's 2, 4, 6, 2, negative 2, negative 2. So in black is our original shape at negative 1, 1. There's your f. G is at 1, 1. H is at 2, negative 1 and i is at negative one, negative one. Okay, so that's what it looks like, some sort of trapezoid. So let's get in our new guy. So we're at negative three, three. So that's your f prime. And we have g is at three, three. There's your G prime. H prime is at 6, negative 3. And I prime is at negative 3. Uh, oh, I think that's supposed to be negative 3, negative 3, and I didn't write that second negative in. Yep. Let me clean this up a little bit. Sorry. So that's going to be here. So sometimes your image can be inside of your pre-image, okay? So remember what we talked about. We could take, um, oh, and I didn't label this guy, he's I. We draw through matching coordinates how you can check to see if you've done it right is do those lines that pass through the matching always converge in the same spot? So again, this is a dilation, the center being the origin, okay? So again, that's going to be what we're going to see the most. Okay, so let's do an example of, now you have to figure out the scale factor. So I'm going to give you two things. Yes? Will it always, it won't, will it always go to zero, zero? Uh, it kind of looks like that's going to be the case. Okay, for all of what you have in the real world, no, it could be different places. Okay, it could be. But if it looks like ours are all about the origin. Okay, so last example. Um, we're going to do what was done in the video. So we're going to take a picture and we're going to enlarge it. Okay. So our last example, oops. Fred wants to enlarge. a 3 by 5 photo to a 7 and a half by 12 and a half photo. What is the scale factor? Okay. So what we're going to do is create a ratio. So remember, we could write this as an ordered pair. So the original, so the pre-image, would be 3, 5. The image would be 7 and a half, 12 and a half. So what we're going to do is create 
a ratio, because remember proportions is just a ratio between matching things. So we're going to do a ratio, and you only need to do it with one of the dimensions. So you can pick your x's, or you can pick your y's. It's up to you to decide what you want to choose. So you're going to, the ratio of two of the same coordinates. Okay, so we're going to pick, let's do the x's. And let's do, um, always the dilation is going to go on top. So this is the dilation versus the pre-image. Now, we have kind of an unusual situation in that we have some fractions to deal with. So for us, the x would be 7 and a half for the dilation. Actually, go back to color here, blue. 7 and a half, and we're going to compare it to 3. So what we're going to do is do this problem the old-fashioned way. We're going to take 7 and a half and divide it by 3. So this is going to give me 15 halves times the reciprocal. So we've got to remember our fractions. So 3 goes into itself once and into 15 five times, and we get 5 halves. Now, we want to write this out as a mixed number not as an improper fraction. So what would 5 halves be as a mixed number? Say again? Say again, I can hear you. Yeah, the scale factor would be 2 and a half, or you could say is 2.5. So that's how they came from the original to the new one. So that's what you guys are going to be doing. But here's the key, is remember it's dilation, the image, over the original, the pre-image. That's very important. Okay? That does it.